Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we are following breaking news out of Ukraine. Moments ago, Russia's U.N. envoy accused the former president of Ukraine, or didn't accuse, he said that the former president of Ukraine asked Putin to send troops into Ukraine to keep the peace. Meanwhile, Russian forces continue to surround key military outposts in the Crimean Peninsula in southern Ukraine. The international community is scrambling to stop this crisis before any blood is spilled and any more territory is taken. But while the world focuses on Vladimir Putin and Russia's return to Cold War form, some lawmakers back home are asking a different question. Is this all a mess that President Obama made? Joining me now to discuss all of these issues is Congressman Ed Royce, he's chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks for being here. So the White House says they're going to use every tool at their disposal to isolate Russia uh, diplomatically and economically. Is that going to be enough? Well, let's look at what they mean by economically, because as you know, uh, we in the, in the House and in the Senate uh, are usually quite favorably disposed towards the types of crippling economic sanctions, which would really implode uh, an economy, really have an effect. And as you know, the administration usually is pushing back on sanctions. So uh, I've been in consultation with my Senate counterpart, Mr. Menendez, on this issue, as well as a meeting with, with Jack Lew, the Secretary, last night, which I had on this subject. Uh, I think we're going to be very bullish on doing what we need to do to make, to make Putin feel the heat, or at least to have the oligarchs around him, the business community, feel the kinds of pressure that's going to come uh, if they don't cease and desist on this behavior. The question is... Will the White House support something as aggressive as uh, the economic sanctions that we would like to see pushed? Well, what did Jack Lew say when you and Menendez and he talked about it? Well, he, he speaks about uh, what we can do to do loan guarantees. Uh, and I agree, bolstering help Ukraine, Ukraine is sure. part of this, is part of this. But I, I think we have got to, to work and lead with Europe in order to really create a united front. Because if this thing gets further out of hand and in these cities in the eastern Ukraine, if city, city hall by city hall they start hoisting the Russian flags, you could end up with a, with a civil insurrection across the Ukraine. Do you think you heard uh, Vitaly uh, Turkin, the Russian ambassador to the United Nations, and you hear the things that Putin is saying, describing uh, mob scenes that journalists on the ground in Ukraine say do not exist. They are, they are creating a pretext, a reason for, you, for Russia to go in there and take control, a reason that nobody who is there says is actually real. Do they believe it? Are they being yeah. told this by, by operatives? They're being told this by propaganda in Russia. As you know, he's closed down every other avenue of information into the country now. This is why it would be very important, I think, and Samantha Power did a good job in her speech today at the UN, but what we should be doing right now is bringing up a Security Council resolution which would not only isolate Russia, make Russia vote against, you know, the rest of the international community, but also put observers directly into the East so that, so that they can report back to the international community and sort of um, adjudicate this issue. Is that persecution going on? You and I know it is not. We hear it from, from reporters. But we need to get the NGO groups in on the ground, and that should be part of what the Security Council and does. Samantha Power said that uh, tomorrow, I think she said, uh, there will be observers sent from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the uh, OSCE, as many right. refer to it. Numerous people in your party, um, John McCain, Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, Mike Rogers, they've called for a more forceful response from, response from President Obama. But I have to say, his pre predecessor's approach... Um, George W. Bush, he alternated between being tough on Putin and trying to court him. And, and regardless of the approach, that didn't stop Putin from invading Georgia in 2008. Is there a value in keeping a diplomatic tone? Here's, here's the lesson. You know, uh, this administration uh, tried with respect to Poland and the Czech Republic. Uh, they had exerted a lot of political capital in order to put in uh, an anti-ballistic missile defense system to protect against Iranian launches either to Europe or the United States. Uh, the president scrapped that as an overture to Putin because Putin didn't want it. It seems like those overtures only make 
Putin more aggressive. So I he think he sees them as weakness. He right? sees them as weakness on the part of the United States. So I think what we have to do is figure out the considerable economic power that the U.S. and that Europe have. Consider for a minute all the oligarchs, all the money in Western banks, the state-owned banks in Russia. How how susceptible they are to economic pressure from the United States. Uh, the collapse of the ruble. The ruble. This is the kind of thing that we could bring into play. Uh, and we should do it, frankly, in negotiations with the Russians uh, and, and give him an exit ramp. Give Putin an exit ramp in terms of the Black Sea fleet. Say, yes, we're going to recognize that you operate the fleet out of Sevastopol. That, uh, you know, the Ukrainian government asked them to respect that agreement and, and then try to move on without more um, aggression out of Russia. Congressman Ed Royce, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, thank you so much. Thanks, we Jeff. appreciate it. When we come back,